Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and today's video is the final in my crafty must-have series. Today I'm going to be sharing everything else that I haven't already shared with you that I think are musts. I hope you'll stick around and see what else I love. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. So far this week, I have shared my favorite cutting tools, my favorite adhesives, and my favorite stamping inks and accessories. If you missed any of those videos or want to watch them again, my Crafty Must Haves playlist is linked in the description box. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing other tools, accessories, embellishments that I love to use all the time and I make sure are always here in my craft area. If you're interested in finding out any more about the products or tools that I share today, I do have some links in the description box. Now, a lot of these links will be affiliate links, which means I get a small portion of the sale if you use those links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. I also understand shopping local and finding the best deal that you can. So even if you don't make any purchases from my video today using those links, I would appreciate in the future if you're ever going to do a little crafty online shopping that you might consider using my links. I always have those in the description box of my video. Let's see what else I couldn't craft without. First up and probably my biggest must have in this video are my Elizabeth Craft Designs glitter dots. I get the transparent silver and the transparent clear. I did spend some time a couple weeks ago counting how many dots are on here and there are over 850 if I remember correct. I know it was definitely over 800 and one of these sheets only cost right now at least two dollars and twenty cents. I mean can you beat that? Not only do I love the little sparkle they add, but they're very thin. So if you're going to mail your cards, you don't have a lot of bulk added to it, but you still get all of that sparkle. This was the one item I allowed myself to buy during No Spend November, and I actually went ahead and ordered also. They had some clear glitter border strips, so I haven't gotten them yet. I don't know what they look like, but I hope to soon share a project using those as well. So definitely, if you like a little sparkle but not so much bulk, definitely check these out. Next on my must-haves, are real brush pens. Now, I don't usually do a whole lot of image coloring, but when I do, I want it to be easy. And I have found that using these and blending them out with either the colorless blender that I got from Zig or just with a water brush just adds a nice effect and for me it's super easy. Now, I have used both the Zig and the Arteza and I have to say for me, I don't really notice much of a difference, so definitely the best price would be the Arteza, but I also do love the variety of colors in my set of Zig Clean Color. If you are going to consider purchasing some of these to use, make sure to get yourself some Strathmore Bristol Smooth Paper. That is definitely the most smooth transitioning or blending that I have found with these markers. The next crafty must have I'm going to share with you is Paper Pumpkin Kit. I have already mentioned it in the series. I am not a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but I have been buying these kits off and on for years. And here just recently, I have bought two different 12-month subscriptions. If you buy them in bulk like that, I think it's one month you get free. But what I love is it's only like $20 to $25 with shipping here in the U.S. each month. And it's just kind of like something fun to get in the mail, of course, and they make the cutest projects. And even after all of the contents are used, like the pattern papers and the embellishments, you're left with an awesome stamp set and a little ink cube that you can keep using. Now, I don't always love the kit each month, like if it makes little gift bags or little treat holders. 
I usually would do all alternatives with that or make other items like cards with the contents of the kits. So even if this isn't 100% what you like, there are still many ways to use it and you can always find videos here on YouTube for those monthly alternatives. Now if you do want to give Paper Pumpkin a try, I do have a hostess code this month. It's in the description box below. I would love it if you would use that. That will help me buy some more dimensionals to use on future cards or some other goodies that I can create with and share here on my channel. If you do already get the paper pumpkin kit and you're not sure what to do with your stamp sets after you're done with the kit, I have a video where I share how I store mine. I will link that in the description box below as well. I have tried many other kit subscriptions before, but this is the one that I've really stuck with that I find is more consistent with stuff I like. And I think for that lower price point that this is definitely something to give a try. So another crafty must have for me, this would come from a variety of places and those are sequins and shaker bits. I just love to make a shaker window and I love sequins for sparkles. So I have quite a bit of those. In fact, I have one of those Ikea Rascal carts, I think that's how you pronounce it, filled with these little boxes. And because I love a great deal, I found these boxes at Harbor Freight for just like $5 when I bought it. I'll link the video below where I talk more about this storage idea. Next up, you know that I love to make cards with pattern paper. I'm not so much into creating my own backgrounds, although I do do it from time to time, but 95% of my cards probably use pattern paper in some way. You know that I love the Hot Buy pads from Michaels, but I have gotten a little bit more choosy on those lately. I used to buy every single one that came out, but I do always flip through those papers and make sure I like a good percentage of it before I will buy those. Some other companies I like to buy pattern paper from are Cartabella and Echo Park. I just think they usually have cute and versatile papers. I like to buy the collection packs if I enjoy the pieces in those, as well as six by six paper pads. Now I also love Simple Stories paper, so that is always a great company to check out. And my final must have for the series is some kind of scoring tool. Because I make so many cards, I buy cardstock in full reams and I cut it in half and then I pre-score it so it's ready to turn into cards. I have two different types of boards I use. The first one is this We Are Memory Keepers one. It folds out to be a full size 12 inch scorer and if you lift this up, it actually has a cutting blade too, so it does double duty. And the second board I own is this Score It board. Again, I know you've heard this so many times during this series, but I have had this for probably 15 years. This is probably my favorite one for card bases because you just center it between the measurement you want and then just do that one score line down the center. I also feel this is a little bit more heavy duty and gets me a cleaner score, but I honestly don't know if this is available anymore. I will try to find it and link it up below for you. I hope you enjoyed seeing and hearing about my final crafty must haves. Let me know below what was the favorite thing that you saw in my series and if there was anything I missed telling you about my favorite. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.